Welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's course preview on Promotion Analysis Techniques. Promotion is one of the category management tactics and is a key driver of incremental sales as well as a point of differentiation for retailers. Promotional events are executed by retailers and vendors to influence consumer demand, thereby driving sales and profit. Promotion is a means of moving merchandise through the retailer to the consumer. Promotion can result in a lift in sales by more than 2 or 300 percent in some categories. Here are the learning objectives for the full course. There are several hands-on workshops included that help students to practice their new learnings and learn to apply their new skills. We'll only cover a few of the objectives in this course. Let's get started. Let's start by understanding how promotion fits into the consumer's purchase decision. Promotion is one of the category management tactics and is a key driver of incremental sales as well as a point of differentiation for retailers. Promotional events are executed by retailers and vendors to influence consumer demand thereby driving sales and profit. Promotion is a means of moving merchandise through the retailer to the consumer. Promotion can result in a lift in sales by more than 2 or 300 percent in some categories. For retailers, promotion can mean two things. First, there's the strategic, more long-term type of promotion, which can relate to a retailer's marketing department. The retailer programs developed in here are focused on sending overall messages about their stores to potential customers. This is done through retail marketing, private label brand marketing, flyer programs, and event marketing. These programs help determine the types of consumers that retailers attract to their stores, and they put the plans in place to bring those customers into the stores. Each of these components are typically driven by a separate department or team within the retailer or across different functions. The marketing team's objectives include establishing a clear market position for their formats and banners, drawing new target consumers to the retailer's stores, and improving or enhancing a retailer's image in the community. The second part of the promotion relates to operational promotions, usually focused on a product, category, or store. The objectives of these operational programs must support retailers' product management objectives. We're going to be focusing the rest of this training course on the operational side of promotions for both retailers and vendors. Promotional evaluation should start with confirming promotional strategy for both the retailer and the vendor. Next, a top-line promotional evaluation should be completed, including a promotional scorecard, where the promotional results are assessed at a category, brand, and segment level. The third level of promotional evaluation is deep dive analytics, based on weekly and item level data. This gives insights into past promotions and helps to plan for future promotions. The final level is promotional planning, which is assessing promotional weeks to determine the most impactful promotional weeks and the corresponding price points. This also considers return on investment, both from a retailer and vendor perspective. This is the approach that we follow for this course to give you a robust and in-depth understanding of all aspects of analyzing promotion. Let's get started. So, what are a retailer's overall promotional strategies for the category? Promotion may drive consumer traffic into the store, particularly with retailers who have a high-low pricing strategy. Promotion helps retailers build their price image. Things like hot-priced front page ads and buy one, get one free promotions confirm to consumers that they're in the game. Promotion also allows retailers to make competitive statements, either on price or new in-store concepts. 
Another retailer strategy is to induce trial and create excitement for the consumer. Retailers may run contests, support local fundraising activities, or have value-add promotions. Building profit through cross-category promotions like a barbecue flyer or ethnic foods flyer can increase sales in highly profitable categories. And promotion can build loyalty through different programs like Everyday Low Price, or EDLP, and Loyalty Club programs. Promotion doesn't always necessarily relate to low prices. That's only one of the strategies that retailers can take. Understanding strategy up front can make the assessment phase much more straightforward and targeted. Retailers may have three objectives as they relate to promotion, which also tie in with the strategies that we just reviewed. These include to draw new customers or traffic to the retail stores, or acquiring new customers. To draw loyal customers back to the retail stores more frequently, or retaining their most loyal customers. Or to draw shoppers to purchase once they're in the store, or selling more to shoppers. Each of these objectives use different promotional vehicles to communicate to their consumers or shoppers. Let's review each of these promotional objectives in more detail, including the different promotional vehicles. Drawing new customers and traffic to stores is one objective of retailer promotions. The objective for retailers is to induce trial. This can include hot pricing, coupons, new products, contests, community and charity events, and specific target customer events. Retailers can use vehicles like print advertising, including flyers, inserts or newspaper ads, online communications, and TV and radio. Flyers are the most visible form of consumer marketing in the business, with over 37 million flyers being distributed weekly in North America. This industry alone is worth billions of dollars in costs to retailers and vendors. Retailers may also want to draw their most loyal customers back to the store through special functions, including contests and sweepstakes, special customer services, price discounts or rebates, points programs with rewards, and personalized customer interactions. These offers are made only available to their top customers, usually through some type of loyalty card program. Retailers can use email, direct mail, print advertising and flyers, and TV and radio to communicate to their most loyal customers. If they have some type of loyalty card program, they can specifically target groups within their loyalty cards and connect with them directly. The last type of promotions are in-store, driven by displays, in-store demos, point-of-purchase materials, in-store digital media, and signage. In-store promotions can also be referred to as shopper marketing, with retailers trying to influence shoppers in their path to purchase. For retailers, promotion planning and execution is a significant component of the day-to-day -day business within the category management team. Here are the basic steps of the promotion planning and execution process for a retailer. It starts out with an annual target setting and marketing calendar being developed, with the senior management at the retailer setting their targets to achieve their annual business plan. Developing the marketing calendar is typically jointly owned between different functions responsible for merchandising and marketing within the retailer. Retailers will then meet with vendors to develop and agree to an annual business plan, including promotional support over the upcoming year. This is usually done in the fall time period and includes negotiations, vendor agreements, and agreements to volume targets for the upcoming year. Then the retailer allocates items, front pages and themes, like Christmas, Thanksgiving and Easter, and is always looking forward by one or two quarters to continually plan and purchase for upcoming events. On a weekly basis, category teams select items and determine forecasts. 
The last step of the process is promotion execution and performance management. Many promotional mechanics are required, including communications to stores, print flyers, and so on. Also, a team within the retailer should perform a post-evaluation of results from each promotion, including forecast versus actual performance. Retailer headquarters needs to consider everything from floor plans to promotion and merchandising information, to ad and ordering information, and even price tag allocation. There are many different components that can be included in the communications to stores, depending on the overall processes within the retailer's own promotional strategies. So promotion has a direct impact on stores in many different ways. Promotion management applications for retailers can vary significantly based on the sophistication of their own internal systems. Overall, these systems allow for automation of the planning, execution, and review of promotional events. An ongoing focus area for retailers is around inventory. Poorly planned inventory behind promotions can result in out-of-stocks, which are costly due to lost consumer purchases, or excess inventory, which also incurs significant cost to the retailer. Many retailers have internal applications that allow for effective forecasting on an ongoing basis. Promotional planning is an ongoing requirement for retailers. More sophisticated systems allow retailers to determine margins at planned selling prices, predict lift factors based on promoted price points and historical results, and to understand what additional volume is needed to break even on margin. Promotional tracking ensures that there are evaluation methods in place to assess promotions after they've run, both for a specific flyer as well as for aggregates over time. There are also sophisticated systems for developing ad layouts. The actual ad layout and development is typically worked in a separate retailer department with input from the category management team. Based on this, promotional planning requires succinct processes and software applications to be in place to allow for easy execution of promotions for retailers. For most retailers, ads are run every week or even more frequently for some that have multiple banners and regions that are on different flyer cycles. Vendors promote for the same reasons as retailers, but they're typically focused on the brands that they represent and to increase awareness and loyalty for their brands. Vendors typically rely on trade spend dollars to promote their brands through their retail partners. In this era of the ever-changing consumer, the race is on to improve the effectiveness of trade spend. The effective management of trade promotions is growing in importance. Trade promotions represent a significant part of the cost of consumer packaged goods and an important part of a go-to market strategy for enhancing brand market share. But there's little visibility into where this spending actually goes or how effectively it increases revenues, expands market share, or creates brand awareness among consumers. Consumer packaged goods companies want to improve their effectiveness to reach targeted consumers, shape demand to increase market share, and maximize the effectiveness of trade dollars. We'll get into more detail on trade spend later on in this training course. We've now given you a preview of our certified course on promotion analysis techniques, which is an important tactic to understand and be able to evaluate the results of. There are many options for you to choose from if you're interested in purchasing this course. The online course is available for purchase through Our House, which is Category Management Knowledge Group's state-of-the-art online training center. If you'd prefer, we can also run a private webinar for up to 200 people for a cost of $3,000 or a live session at a national or team meeting. Or if you're from a larger organization where many people would want to access the course, we can also make the course available for your use within your own internal learning management system. Your choices are limitless.
Return on investment of your data purchase is paramount. For the millions of dollars some organizations spend on data, you want to know that the data is being optimized and maximized. Purchasing data gives your organization facts and data. But you shouldn't allocate your whole budget to data. By adding in software and reporting tools, you're providing them with information. Usually this requires additional budget dollars to pay for the software and tools. For many organizations, the data and software comes with training, and unfortunately many believe that training is enough to develop skills to properly use data, but it's not. You need to provide applicational training that will help your organization move from data to insights. Not only category management needs to have these skills, Sales, marketing, space management, and other departments require these analytic skills to make more strategic and fact-based decisions in their roles. And to move to breakthrough insights, the right analysis at a much deeper level needs to be done. This is where the specialists do their work, where category management and shopper marketing can complete the in-depth analysis to find those breakthroughs. You need to set aside part of your data budget to pay for the corresponding applicational training to increase capability on your team and in your organization ongoing. This will help you increase data return on investment and, more importantly, move your organization to a more strategic and fact-based approach. At Category Management Knowledge Group, we can work with you to create solutions that will help you move your organization to a more strategic, fact-based place with increased return on investment for data purchased. So where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing the certified course or working with us to help you determine multifunctional training opportunities for your organization, that will ultimately lead to increased return on your data investment, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.